PMAC movies back in the PMAC movies movie room, which is still horribly cluttered. Stacks and stacks of movies all over. Um, we got a PMAC movies haul video here for you today, which is going to include a nice Kino Lorber order. That's going to be the main event, along with a package from my good pal, Joe Masiello. We'll take a look at that. And then I think I got a couple things from Goodwill. Not a ton of stuff this week. Um, I am waiting for my Severin sale order. So I don't know how many of the old PMAC Movies fans purchase things from, from Severin. Um, probably at least a few. You know, another boutique horror company. But, you know, the sale just wasn't run very well. And um, I think the order was... When was it? Early July, was it? So it's going to be about two months by the time I get my order. Um, but uh, I'm hoping, I was hopeful that I would get that today because it has been, it was shipped last week or something. And um, it was set to arrive Monday. But a lot of times the packages come a little bit early. Um, and it looked like it arrived in Rochester yesterday and I don't know I don't I, I'm probably not going to get it until Monday it looks like it's going to be pretty close it's going to get to the to the post office today I wonder if you can like go pick up packages if, if like it arrives a little bit late I don't know how that works maybe I mean maybe if it arrives at the post office um I can call and see if I can pick it up or something I don't know um I guess I'm not sure how all that works anywho um, that'll be another, that'll be its own separate unboxing video because that is going to be quite the haul. But let's take a look at what I got because I did get some cool stuff from Kino Lorber. Um, so that'll be the first thing we take a look at and then the rest of the stuff here. Um, do take a look in the description section for ways that, um, you know, you can reach out or help out PMAC Movies. I do appreciate your support. I appreciate the comments. Um... And I do try to get back to everybody who comments. Usually what happens is I'll go through, um, unless there's something I really want to respond to right away, I'll um, when I have a little bit of downtime at work or something, I'll go through and respond to everybody. So sometimes I'll be, it'll be like um, a few videos back. Be, oh, I didn't respond to this, the people in this video. But, uh, you know, I, I do get back to everybody. So please leave feedback, comments. Join in on the PMAC conversation. Let's move on and take a look at what I hoarded up on. I do have a new release also that I got. Um, but let's take a look at Kino Lorber. Because if you checked out their Wild Supplies last sale, understand that that sale is still updating. So they'll remove stuff. They'll add stuff. They'll drop prices. And I realized I was going through like the blu-ray.com message boards and stuff and looked at it and I think there's like a Kino, you know, customer service guy or some sort of Kino representative that said there was some price drops, some additions. So I took a look and there was a bunch of stuff that I was interested in. Um stuff that was things I was interested in before, but it was just a little bit too much. And a bunch of these dropped to like very, very affordable. Five forty nine Five ninety nine for some of them. So let's take a look at what I got. I did pay a little bit of Play-Doh for a couple of these babies. So let's take a look at those. One that I had my eye on previously, and it just, it wasn't the right price point. Um, and it might have been the same as what I got it for, but I saw it was in the Wild, wild Supplies last, and I was like, I better get it now before it, it goes out of print. It is Planet of the Vampires here. A, uh, what is this, a Bava? Yeah, Mario Bava movie from 1965, 88 minutes. Uh, Bava, you know, did a lot of, like, horror, uh, uh, giallo, stuff like that. But this is, like, a, looks like a sci-fi horror type. Um, and the case does have, like, I, you could see, maybe see, see that right there in the light. There's a little damage, but that actually doesn't go into the artwork. So, I was trying to look for, like, a mint one-disc case, and I just... Some of the ones over there I got with other stuff in them, I just didn't like that much. Um, and it has a little damage on the side, too. 
like factory, you know, this is like factory damage, but it looks, nothing got to the, um, to the actual artwork. And this is, this is a nice one. This isn't from like their Studio Classics line. So it has like the more artwork and the reverse. The reverse even has some artwork and stuff like that. Looks like poster, like mini poster looking things there. So Planet of the Vampires, try to get in the Baba movies on Blu-ray. 12 bucks, a little, you know, a little bit more than I wanted to spend, but at this point, you know, it's one that was on my radar and it might not drop to 10, it might just be gone. Um, another one that I was looking at previously, wanted to wait until it dropped to 10, but now it's in the wild, supplies last sale at 12, and I figured, you know, for a couple bucks more, I need to make sure I snag it. Another Vincent Price one, I try to snag all these. Uh, Madhouse, Peter Cushing also in this. Like to grab all the, it says it's an Amicus co-production, and these Amicus movies tend to be very good from 1974. Uh, 89 minutes. It does have a few special features, a commentary and a featurette. Um, it doesn't look like it has subtitles. I, I, that's one thing about Kino, and it might be mostly their older ones that don't have subtitles, which I, you know, I, I watch movies with subtitles because sometimes the dialogue's hard to hear. Um, so those are both eleven ninety nine each. Let's take a look at what else I got. Um, Another one that had been on my radar for quite a while, um, and it's a Christopher Lee one. I tried to grab all the Cushing's, Lee's, Price's, and it had been in sales at $9.99, and I looked into the movie, and I just, I didn't really want to spend that on it. There's like a double pack that was pretty cheap and, and a pretty good double pack, um, so I was thinking, you know, maybe I'll just get that, you know, stuff like that, but it dropped down to $7.99. I, I have the receipt here. I just want to make sure my prices are accurate. I'm pretty sure it was $7.99. Yes, it was. And it is The Man Who Could Cheat Death from 1959, 83 minutes, directed by Terrence Fisher. This was a Paramount one, apparently. So glad to snag this up for a very affordable price. I'm glad I, you know, I was patient and waited until it dropped to the, to my price range. Let's see, uh, the rest of these are ones that like they weren't real at the top of my list or anything, but the prices were just too good to refuse um, for most of them. Uh, one, this one I wasn't really totally interested in, but I looked into it and it sounded like a really good like 70s kind of, I think it's like a cop movie, a detective movie from 1972, 111 minutes. It is Hickey. And Boggs here. Hickey and Boggs. Never seen this movie. Um, another one without subbies. No! Keen, yeah, I mean, some of their older ones. This is from like 2014, no subtitles. But um, it sounds like a, a good movie. James Woods is also in it. And a bunch of people I don't know. I reversed the artwork. I thought that this artwork was a lot better. I, I like it a lot more than that artwork personally so i reversed it glad to get this for only 849 all right another one let's see where i uh, another one that was a little bit more expensive than the rest um a movie called the children's hour and i recently watched um a foreign movie a danish movie um, which I want to do a review on. It's a great movie with Mads uh, Michelson, and it is called The Hunt. And it, it shows kind of how somebody's reputation in the community can be totally destroyed just by an accusation. And this movie, I've heard this movie compared to that movie, so I was really interested in that because I absolutely love The Hunt. I, I loved it. That's a PMAP classic for sure. Mads Michelson. There are some messages in that movie that I don't like, but I love the movie. Um, and when I do the review video, I'll talk about kind of like how, why I like the movie, but I'm concerned about some of the messages that it sends also. Um, but this one, um, somewhat similar. I looked into it a little bit, and I think it has to do with, uh, you know, they're accused of a, a, a 
certain type of relationship that is not looked fondly upon back then. So I'm sure it's not going to be as, as good to me as The Hunt, but I think it's um, still going to be a good one. All right, and so those were the 849 ones. Then we really dropped. The rest of these, there was one other 799 one, which I thought was a really good deal for this. This is a Code Red movie, and it is called Pit Stop. Um, I looked into the movie a little bit. It sounded like, you know, it got very positive reviews and stuff like that. It was also put out by Arrow, it looked like. But the additions are, are um, I might have actually read that this one was better. I'm not, I'm not sure. They're probably pretty similar. But for $7.99, I could not pass up on Pit Stop. And then we, we drop down in price here. Um, the rest of these, very, very affordable. This next one, this is like a, these, these Michael Crichton movies, Crichton, whatever, very propagandish, his books and everything. Um, he's in on some stuff. I mean, he, the creator of Westworld, um, Coma, Jurassic Park, all really good movies, actually. I've seen, of, of course, I've seen Jurassic Park, but I've also seen Westworld and Coma, the classic uh, Westworld and Coma. Coma, I think, is uh, Michael Douglas. Is it Michael Douglas in that one? Um, but it is Pursuit here. And I think this was a made-for-TV movie. And I had come very close to getting it before. I believe it might have been a little bit more expensive. I paid $5.99 for this. $5.99 for a Kino that's going out of print. I was like, I'll snag. I think it was more than that. I think it might have been 7 or 8 And I was like kind of on the fence. But at five ninety nine, PMAC just couldn't refuse. Um, so this is about. Uh, oh, this might be about a terrorist, a diabolical plot to blast lethal nerve gas in, into San Diego during the Republican convention. So Martin Sheen plays a computer hacker. Hacker. Um, I don't know. It doesn't. Like I said, it doesn't sound great enough for me to spend too much money on it. But it's six bucks. It is from 1972. It is only 74 minutes. Um, so I, I believe that it was like a TV movie, and this Blu-ray was just put out in 2019. So probably not a big seller if they're already selling it for for 5.99. Let's continue. Uh, this is a movie that I read. I read like crap about it, but it looks like you know some people thought it was a fun one, like more of a nostalgic one. It is a Roland Emmerich movie, and they were selling this for, what is it called again? Okay. six forty nine. Seemed like a good deal for Making Contact from 1986, 79 minutes. Um, I've never seen the movie. It looks like something you might have to have nostalgia to enjoy the movie. Um, looks like there's some stuff with telekinesis and a sinister ventriloquist they always they always make those they're like racist against these ventriloquists um these ventriloquists are always the bad guy always at that price though it was just so cheap i think i thought about getting this before when it was like maybe 850 or something it looks it just looks like a fun 80s movie and uh some of the reviews i read for it were just trash but then you know i read more kind of customer stuff and they tended to like it so i went ahead and grabbed it interesting in some of the stuff that that one's going to present in the movie up next up next this is one i didn't really have my eye on but i looked into kind of what the movie was about and it was only 549 this dropped to 549 so i was like a kino for 549 that i'm mildly interested in at that price i got to do it jock to me directed it and it is the Pied Piper here from 1972, 86 minutes. Sounded like this had some interesting social messages maybe in it. And so I was interested in that. Um, set in the Middle, Age, Ma Middle Ages, the divided town of Hamlin tries in vain to rid itself of the Black Plague. And then it has to do with things going on in this town. Um, Donald Pleasance is in it. And... Um, Sounds like it could really have some interesting social stuff in it. So I snagged it up at five forty nine. You know, five dollars used to be five fifty used to be the old Walmart DVD bin where it's like, oh, I want this. It's in the DVD bin. Now it's like five fifty for a movie 
is uh, it's like, oh, should I spend that? I don't know. But for a Kino, for a movie that looks that interesting, got to snag it. Put that in the wrong pile. Um, up next, one that wasn't really on my radar, but again, for the price, this was six forty nine. dollars um, I like Don Johnson. It is a Western. Looks like kind of a unique movie. Read good things about it. Zachariah here. Apparently, it's like a Western with like rock music and stuff going on in it. Um, this is from a uh, brand new HD master from a 4K scan from 1971, 93 minutes, Zachariah. And again, customer reviews and stuff tend to be pretty good. Um, I think that uh, like critic reviews are pretty mixed, which I don't mind. I tend to not, you know, if a movie gets really good critical reviews, I'm kind of like wondering, why did that get such good reviews? And then those movies tend to be... I don't want to say always, but a lot of times tend to be kind of boring, you know, I, I don't know. But uh, continuing, I got a little Western here. I had had my eye on this one for quite a while, and it dropped to 549. I think I was interested in it when it was like maybe like 8 or something. So at 549, I snagged up um, Young Billy Young. This is a Robert Mitchum and a Angie Dickinson movie. David Carradine also in this. Uh, 1969, 89 minutes. Glad to snag it for that price. I mean, it's not, I'm not like, for some of these, it's not like, yeah, I got it, you know. But they're kind of like things that I had on my radar, and then it just dropped to a price I couldn't refuse. Um, and then this one, this is another one that I had passed on before, but it dropped super cheap. Trying to get some of these Burt Lancasters, if I can get them, you know, that affordable, the Young Savages. Um, this one was only $5.49, starring a little Burt Lancaster from 1960, 103 minutes. So glad to get some of these for, for good prices. A lot of these might never be cheaper. Some of them might drop a little bit more, but I just thought it was time to pull the trigger. And, you know, I was I was looking at, can I put together an order that, where I'd spend like 50 bucks on these? And this ended up being uh, ninety two thirty eight plus tax. So, oh yeah, they ended up being a little bit more than than fifty bucks. Glad to get them. Let me know if you guys snagged up any, and hopefully I help some of you by pointing out that some of the prices dropped and there's new additions. Because I kind of fell asleep on that deal, like I wasn't checking it, and then there ended up being a lot of stuff I was interested in. Next, we got a Scream Factory Collector's Edition. When I can get these from the Target Buy 2 Get 1 sale, if I'm interested in them, I will snag them. I did end up returning the copy of, um, is it 13 Ghosts, I think it's called? The Scream Factory Collector's Edition. I ended up returning that because I have the original Blu-ray, which the transfer is apparently the same or extremely similar. But I did want to get a movie that I don't believe has been on blu-ray at all yet it is tales from the dark side here i do have the complete tv show of this this is the movie um i believe this came out after the tv show i could be wrong um 93 minutes from 1990 looks like a one of those fun anthology movies i've heard that it's kind of like um creep show three it's like a creep show three sort of thing but um i you know with the creep shows i thought some of the segments of the creep shows were really really crappy like i was like what was this what was the point of this at all like some of them though are really really good um from those anthologies some of the, the british ones i've seen are just excellent and then um what do i have here i have a couple Trilogy of Terror. The Trilogy of Terror ones, I like the second one more than the first. But, you know, some sometimes there's some there's some really great segments of the anthology, and then there's just shit. So, hopefully, there's some good ones in Tales from the Dark Side. Okay. Joe Masiello sent me a package, which uh, is actually really cool, because it's like I forget what he's going to send me. And I, he actually reminded, like I asked him what, what was in that again, but I think I was at work and I wasn't like even totally focused. And one of them, I, I think he told me one of them that I was not expecting to get. Now I, I was just like, what? I forgot what it even was. But let's take a look and I'll explain that more. 
Um, he did send me a copy of Captain Marvel, which I already have this on Steelbook and the Target Digipack, which he knew I had those already. Nice slipcover on this. I do like the slipcover. I haven't opened the Target Digipack, so I might just return that. I'm not the type of person that needs every version of a movie, even if it's like my favorite movie ever, which Captain Marvel certainly isn't. I I thought it was an entertaining movie, but um, not one of my favorites. Good, fun, maybe not even good, fun, but but not one of my favorites. Um, so I just need to figure out what to do with these, what I'm going to keep and what I'm going to get rid of. I, you know, the artwork on the Steelbook like, isn't anything great, um, so I don't know. I do like these, you know, these 4K editions with the slipcover. The slipcovers are really nice on these, so we'll see. I have um pretty much all the Marvel movies on the Steelbooks, except, like, I think Guardians of the Galaxy 2. I have a regular Blu-ray, and Ant-Man, the second Ant-Man, I have the uh, 4K with slipcover. But most, almost all of them, I have the, uh, the Steelbooks. Continuing on... We'll show you the grand finale of the Joe Masiello, um package. I was really close to getting this. It dropped to like $19 on Amazon. I was really close to getting it. I had mentioned to him that I wanted it. I didn't think he was going to send I didn't think he was actually going to buy it and send it to me. Um, so I was actually when I saw this in there, and I, I'm pretty sure he actually told me that it was in there, but it like I, it didn't click. He told me this was in there, but it didn't click what it was. So when I saw it, I just, a huge smile went on my face. I was so excited because this is something I actually wanted to watch right away. And it is The Outsider, season one here. This is uh, based on a Stephen King book. And uh, this is 551 minutes. Jason Bateman is in this. Um, this guy who's been in several movies is in it, uh, Ben... Mendelssohn. I think he's the bad guy in Ready Player One. He's the bad guy in a few movies. Um, I've watched the first two episodes. I'm into the third episode of this, and it's got me hooked. It is uh, It's really interesting. It starts out kind of feeling like it's just kind of a regular murder investigation, but it's getting more um, horror -y. It's getting more supernatural. It's getting very interesting, so... Um, absolutely fantastic so far. Kind of reminds me of a true detective sort of thing, even with like the artwork on it. Kind of reminds me of like a true detective, but it's got really a, a big supernatural component to it. So I'm excited to continue this. I believe it's 10 episodes total. This was awesome. And then, uh, you know, Charmaine was doing a Zoom, Zoom meeting with some of her friends. And I, I reached my finger and I saw that there was like a card in there. I pull it out. It's a $25 Marshalls gift card for Charmy. Joe Masiello, he is he is the man. Joe Masiello is definitely the man. Uh, so Charmy's happy too. Then a few other things. I had asked him to pick up all of these for me actually. Um, if you saw him at Dollar Trees, I asked him to pick up these. Probably the best Dollar Tree one he got me was this Three Kingdoms which I don't know that too many people found this. This is a really cool one. It's got Maggie Q in it, who I really like. Uh, Andy Lau and Sammo Hung from the director of The Black Masks. Three Kingdoms, Resurrection of the Dragon. This is 100 minutes, put out by E1. It seems like E1 is usually Canadian stuff. Is this Canadian or US release? E1 Entertainment One Films Canada. So this look appears to be a Canadian Blu-ray. Really cool, though. I like to get these Asian movies, definitely with Maggie Q in it. A few other Dollar Tree ones I wasn't able to find that Joe picked up for me. Now, I try to get all the Steven Seagal Blu-rays. They're usually not that good. We got attrition here. This one actually looks like it might be decent. Like, it sounds interesting, Ex-Special Forces agent and Kung Fu expert Hacks, played by Steven Seagal, has renounced his violent past and turned to a life as a healer in a small remote village. But when a local crime lord kidnaps a girl known to have mythical powers, Axe gets back into the game. Steven Seagal, look at that. Badass. Attrition. 
Looks like it could actually be a fun one. Um, and then another Dollar Tree one I could not find I was interested in, but mostly because of the cast that's in it. Shock and Awe, Woody Harrelson, Tommy Lee Jones, James Marsden, and Rob Reiner. Uh, 90 Minutes from 2017. Shock and Awe. And then he sent me, this is one that I got, but actually my Blu-ray had like a scratch on it. So he sent me another copy of Humanity Bureau starring Nicolas Cage. So my other copy of Humanity Bureau, I mean, it's not bad, but I knew that he had this one and he was already going to send it to me. So I'm like, you know, my, the one I got has a scratch on it. Um, and I like a mint one. That is one thing that I'm OCD about is even if there are faint scratches, I get annoyed about that. But I open up that one and it's good. And then this was a really cool one that he found at FYE. I had been interested in getting this years ago when the code was still valid. And I think it was around 9 or 10 bucks, and I passed on it. And then I think it, it it's probably went up in price most places. But he found it at, at FYE for $5 and he sent me a picture. And I was like, wow, that's I would like to get that. That's a good score. And he said that I think he said there was one other copy. And that he would snag one up for me if he went back there and it was still there. And he did, and he snagged me a copy. And it is Nomeo and Juliet, the 3D one with the lenticular slip cover. And I'm, I'm really happy to find this one, actually. Um, or for him to find it and send it to me. Because it is one that I wanted. I have that, uh, the Sherlock Gnomes, which I think is the sequel to this. So I wanted this one, and definitely to be able to get the 3D version of it is very awesome. Um, I do have a 3D TV, which we do use the 3D thing sometimes, not like too often, but pr probably every couple months or so we watch a 3D movie. So Nomeo and Juliet, um, one that has eluded me at a good price. Got that one. So glad to get that. Thanks again, Joe Masiello. You the man. Um, and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. You the man. Up next, a couple good... I think there was just a couple Goodwill ones. I, Goodwill didn't get much in this week. Um, I did get Castle Season 1. I do enjoy some Nathan Fillion, um, who got... You know, his career really went up big time since Firefly. You know, he's been in movies and several movies after that. Uh, this is a, a short and first season. It's only 430 minutes, but they priced it at $2. They usually price their seasons at 5 and I would not have paid that for this. And I believe all the discs were mint, the three discs. So for 2 bucks, i I'll do that for little Nathan Fillion. Who's the girl in this? I don't know who she is. I've actually never watched this show. Probably, I can't say I haven't watched a mini of it, a minute of it, because I probably saw like flipping through. I might have stopped on it, and then I have no idea about this show. I've never seen it. I never had Nickelodeon, but it was two dollars for apparently the whole series. Invader Zim. Let me know about this show. I know nothing about it. The Complete Invasion. So, it looks like a dog got a hold of one of these or something. It got got nasty right there but i believe all the discs in there were were good they all looked mint um i checked two of them actually these got kind of beat up too but two dollars for all that um how many minutes is this 715 minutes only two dollars i will snag that and uh this might be something like i said i mean it's obviously it's not in good shape but the discs are all good in it so Somebody will probably want it if I'm not interested in keeping it. I just spit a little bit. Oopsie, did you see that? Um, I'm hungry, so I'm drooling. Anyway, holy crap, this was a half hour. Time flies, man. Time flies. It feels like it was like maybe 15 minutes, and it was double that. But uh, I think I'm probably going to go continue The Outsider. I, I, I like to watch movies on the weekend. Uh especially horror movies when Charmy's not home. Um, it is like a horror TV show, so I can't really watch it with her. And I'm already in the middle of it, and it's intense, 
and it's good and I recommend it. So I'm probably going to watch at least a little bit more of that before I watch a movie. And then I might watch something like Tales from the Dark Side or, um, I don't know, some, something that I've gotten fairly recently. Um, but that's it. So again, check out the description section for ways that you can contact me and uh, help support the channel and all those things. I do appreciate I appreciate the thumbs up and the comments. Um, it, they're all motivators. So if you like the videos, you want me to keep making them, do your part in motivating old lazy PMAC. We'll see you next time on PMAC Movies. PMAC Movies.